oyster harvest along the Gulf Coast have declined dramatically since the BP oil spill, according to new research. Even after a slight rebound last year, thousands of acres of oyster beds are producing less than a third of what they did before. Louisiana used to produce one-third of the nation's oyster harvest, up to 7 million pounds of meat a year. The total haul in 2012 was barely half million pounds. A lot of people are blaming it on the BP oil spill. Maybe the oysters are just getting older and their, bio- <laughs> their biological clock is ticking. That they never take that into consideration. You know, a lot of oysters now just don't want to raise young oysters. <laughs> uh, we see that with us. Uh-huh. You know, U.S. citizens aren't having as many kids anymore. Mm-hmm. They just, it's just too costly. You know how much it costs to raise an oyster these days? <laughs> Why, there's sand for this and sand for that. Uh-huh. And- Fresh salt water for this. And and, and some don't want to raise any oysters because they're just shellfish. Absolutely. <laughs> Very good, Mark. Hold it. I'm going to give you a rating. That's about a six. I'll take I had the request from the woman whose uh, boy got her tat sign and wanted a picture. We had some emailed to us. And I went onto that computer machine thing there, and I forwarded that picture over to her. You're a digital guy. Tell you what. <laughs> what a great community we're in. I love how people are just willing to help people out. We owe you guys some ice cream, some light beer, and some corn. You can hang on to my ice cream. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. A little bit of education for you folks that are strictly country. Sir Mix-a-Lot having a birthday today. He's 51. Now, he only had one hit. It was a big one. Now, I will read you some of the lyrics from the song. I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. When a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Here's what it really sounds like. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Oh yeah, there you go. (laughs) When a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. (laughs) (laughs) New line of guys undies designed to make for a more comfortable wearing experience. They're all made with stretch fabrics designed to stay cool and stay in place no matter the weather or what you or do or what you're doing. And uh, the bottoms provide a change up from other garments on their market. They did some tests on it, found these were very comfortable. Did a great job keeping the wearer a lot cooler on some of the hottest days of the summer. Folks, you think your job's bad? How would you like to be the person who has to take the temperature of an of a person out there laying asphalt all day on the highway? And then at 5.30, you got to get down in there and find out how the underwear fared. You think you got a bad job? I don't think yours is all that bad. I don't mind getting up early, actually. <laughs> do you want the truth? Okay. Or, uh-huh. or do you want the evening local television news? Yeah. All right. Yeah, because I mean, there's a difference. Mm-hmm. There's what we do, or you can have, well, somebody in the newsroom's got a new polo shirt. Oh, gosh, I know. You might as well. You get the same thing watching the dating game. Um, newscaster number one. Yeah, there you go. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Dating Game. Live with Marindale. Welcome. Where today we've got three eligible bachelors uh, and one lucky lady. We're going to start with a series of questions for bachelor number one, bachelor number two. Let's identify the bachelors first. (laughs) Bachelor number one. Yeah, my name is uh, Steve. I got to tell you, I'm quite handsome. (laughs) Dropped out of school in sixth grade and I'm looking for a little bimbo (laughs) to kind of support me for the rest of my life. (laughs) Okay, see, that's great. What about you, bachelor number two? Uh, my name's Rick. I'm uh, I'm an ex wrestler. I've had some uh, drug rehab problems in my life, but for the most part, I think I'm a catch. You know, look, if I if I turn this way, it's my best. Side. Okay, Rick. Great, thanks. How about you, bachelor number three? I'm a little nerd, and uh, I got a computer degree from MIT, but I never had a date with anybody in my life, so I'm really excited to be here. All right. Hey. We got our three bachelors ready to go for the daddy game. <laughs> that show just c- 
crushed me, uh-huh. killed me. And, you know, even back then we suspected it was lame. Oh, yeah. But you couldn't prove it, <laughs> so you watched it. Oh, heck, we only had two channels, and that was one of your options. All right, Bambi, it's time for you for your, your first question for Bachelors. And that's your number one. If we were stranded and ran out of gas on a dark street somewhere, what's the first thing that you would do? Oh, my God. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that was something you were forced to watch with your three older sisters. My sisters had the dating game game. (laughs) It was like a Monopoly game. Any of you folks remember that out there? It it was a dating game game, and it came with a cardboard cutout, and and you couldn't see the people behind the cardboard. Remember they put those, those... Actually, we didn't have it, but I vaguely remember that. And you'd spin it. And, oh, I got the hell out of there, Mark. Oh, I can see the influence of all your family members on you. I get yeah. I get why you are how you are. Oh, yeah. I remember <clears throat> when I first met Joyce, the oldest sister. And we sat, we had lunch with her one day. And I said, okay, I get all the stuff Paul's ever said about you, and he's right on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mark would have picked me up every Friday and taken me drinking if he'd have known I had the three sisters I had. I'm ready here. I've calmed down a little bit. Can I request another game show later? <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, maybe. I think yesterday was left-handed day, too. I heard that. Uh, for people who are left-handed. Do you have any lefties in the kids? Um, John is kind of left-handed. I mean, he shoots left-handed and stuff like that. He's ambidextrous. Uh, my dad's. What left-handed. other language does he speak? My my dad is left-handed. <laughs> you can always tell a parent who has their first child because when they're two months old, this this kid is so smart. Mm-hmm. I mean, already doing things. Already knows the ABCs in mm-hmm. two months. Everybody, so, I remember you doing that with Mallory. Oh, yeah. Everybody does it with their first kid. Yep. You know, I hate to say Harvard, but it's starting to look a lot like it. By the time you get your fourth kid, <laughs> you're saying things like this at two months. Isn't it about time you go out and get a job? <laughs> <laughs> and the Scrabble championships are continuing in Buffalo, New York. The winners will be crowned. The architect of the game actually created that game during the Great Depression. Had some other names too for the game. It was called Lexico. It was called Crisscross Words, and it became Scrabble. There's 100 letter titles in a Scrabble game, ranging in value from one point to ten. Groups of six letters that combine with another letter for a valuable seven letter word are called bingo stems. Did you know that? Uh-uh. The official Scrabble Players Dictionary, which was released Monday was the first update they've had in a decade and added 5,000 words, including selfie <laughs> and a few others. Playable Scrabble words must be found in a standard dictionary, cannot require a capitalization, cannot have hyphens or apostrophes, and cannot be an abbreviation. Scrabble was inducted into the National Toy Hall of Fame in 2004, and Hasbro still sells 2 million copies a year in the United States. And there are 151 active sanctioned Scrabble clubs in, <laughs> Scrabble North, club. in North America. If you ever, if Everybody you ever got wanna, your pocket protectors? If you ever okay. want to join, all right. Hey, what happened to my little pocket dictionary? Did anybody see that? Airlines usually boost capacity by adding flights or using bigger planes that hold more passengers. The average flight in July was 88.3% full. That's up from a year ago. I don't think I've ever been on a flight in the last five years that was 88% full. Every flight I've ever been on has been full, 100%. If if there was an empty seat, I sure didn't see it. On just about every flight. Yeah. I wouldn't fly JetBlue anyway. JetBlue to me is like uh, is like Best Buy. I'll never fly JetBlue and I'll never buy anything at Best Buy because mm-hmm. JetBlue made those people stay on that plane. Remember that for six and a half, to, or something like that, or nine hours or something on the tarmac waiting for a problem. Wouldn't let them off the plane. I never will forget that. That, that one, Jack in the Box, there's mm-hmm. another one. Paul, your list of things you'll never forget is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a point there. Annie Oakley. 
So you see, kids, a long, long time ago in a land far away called Ohio, there lived a chick who could actually shoot. <laughs> Her most famous trick, she would, at 90 feet with a twenty two rifle, she would uh, have a playing card turned sideways. She'd split that and then put a bunch more holes in it before it hit the ground. Mm. But... She finally had to give up shooting for a living because they limited her to one box of 22 shells. I'm sorry. Oh, really? I don't care if you're, <laughs> that's right. I don't care if you're Annie Oakley. That's all you get. Amy Grant will be the celebrity guest on Santa Train this year. I'll bet Santa hopes she sits on his lap. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Nashville, Tennessee, and reports <laughs> she'll be part of a trek through the Appalachian on November, bringing gifts to family. <laughs> He read about her and Vince Gill. <laughs> rocking the boat doesn't scare me as much as rocking the chairlift. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard that song? I have not. Oh, Although, yeah. I hear it's going to be big. There's some bad words in that one. <laughs> you don't want to rock the chairlift. I can swim, but I can't fly. <laughs> Olympic gymnast Sean Johnson, not qualified, and former Miss America Lee Merriweather, qualified. Right. Would, surely they wouldn't have three chicks trying to decide, <laughs> <laughs> you know, who the prettiest chick is because neither one of them would want to say anything bad. Sean Johnson is female. They got three females. <laughs> That'll be a six-hour pageant. The pageant <laughs> itself will take two. The judging will take four. Can you imagine three women trying to decide who the prettiest is? Mark? Can you imagine that? No, no Paul. Oh, my gosh. I'm not watching that one. See, that's why. They didn't want a guy, folks. They didn't pick a guy because a guy is going to pick the hottest-looking woman. Exactly. He's going to pick the one who's who's got class and... <laughs> Anything else with CL? Well, yes, yes. And you know that. Yeah. Why, the the three women, they can look beyond that. Right. They can actually see into the soul of that girl. Well, see, and if you got chicks judging it, the talent competition will now actually mean something. Yeah. Oh, you can get a half leg wax with Jessica. I don't know why somebody would only wax half of their leg. I'm guessing that's do, like would a... Would you do like the right half or the left half? Well, there's a lot of gals when they wear skirts, they only shave up to the knee. Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> that would be just sick. <laughs> Huh? I didn't you know, invent that, actually. You, you had the <laughs> hottest legs until I saw above the knee. Oh, my gosh. You look like Joe Garagiola. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? Did he have hairy legs? <laughs> I, I don't know. Jeez, Dewey. That's just something else. Half a leg wax, though. I'm guessing that's just like a half-off deal or something. Yeah, so they don't have to. Oh. <laughs> anyway, you know, you, you women know what that's all about. <laughs> know what that's all about. Know what.